Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Virginia lawmakers pass a landmark recreational cannabis legalization bill, or at least they're trying to kind of help us unpack this story from the Marijuana Business Daily is Katrina Glogowski, angel investor and attorney. Katrina, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. So last week, House lawmakers passed a bill 55 to 42, while the Senate approved its version by 23 to 15. So there's a big difference that the two bills uh, have and whether vertical integration would be allowed. So hopefully it's a lot more streamlined than a previous podcast we did uh, on South Dakota. Hopefully this is a little bit more streamlined and won't be uh, kicked out based on a technicality. Virginia kind of came out right after the November elections and said, we're broke, we're working on it. And within 90 days, lawmakers passed this bill. Not necessarily unprecedented, but pretty damn quick. That is a remarkable speed, quite frankly, remarkable. So taking major steps towards becoming the 16th state in the nation to legalize recreational cannabis and the first in the South after that um, House and Senate passed on that bill. So both measures calling for commercial recreational cannabis to launch January 1st, 2024. So that's not fast. Like they passed the bill quick, but the implementation implementation is slow. And we've covered on the podcast before that implementation is, is speeding up. I think Nevada was really quick. Illinois was really quick rather than doing what California did, which was like 20 years. Um, it seems to be more like 20 months. Why are they taking so long? I cannot justify a three-year delay at this point. Uh, there are plenty of other states that they can model from. They know what the problems are. They know what processes and procedures work and what don't based on other state experiences. I, I find a three-year delay crazy. Uh, there, there's no reason for it at this point. They're not the first state to legalize marijuana. Right. They're definitely not reinventing the wheel. The, the wheel. So the bill is, is emphasizing opportunities for small business and minority owned local businesses. So that's good. There's a social equity opportunity here for those most uh, impacted by the war on drugs. I think that's a good thing. I think it's going to take some time to implement that. But again, you're not reinventing the wheel. So I'm not really sure why it would take so long, um, assuming that you know, it's like any other rollout, there's going to be some changes and adjustments. So just, you know, cherry pick the best information and, and get that out there as soon as you can. Because in 2024, you're going to be more broke than you are right now. Uh, and of course, the medicine and, and the whole adult use should be in play right off the bat. I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised, given the urgency of their economic situation, that they are pushing it out so far. And, and there's no justifiable reason for it, as we've already stated. Um, you're not the first one, nor are you going to be the last to, to do this process. Yeah, I mean, they're saying that the delay is to give them an ability to create an independent agency called the Cannabis Control Authority to oversee the market and develop regulations and rules. But that, that's nothing new. You, you have a, a regulation in every other state. So again, cherry pick the information you need. Look at 33 medical states and six, uh, 15 rec states. Grab those bills. Um, that should take one quarter of one year instead of three years to delay all of this. So pretty insane to me that they would wait this long uh, after moving so quick. It, it, it doesn't jive. I don't understand what, what they're talking about, but um, hopefully it all works out. I hope so. And maybe they'll find that it's not as hard as they expect and have an early launch and surprise Virginia voters. They do have some surprising stuff. So one, one thing that they might kind of throw out there is allowing medical operators um, a fast track and the Senate would allow operators to co-locate medical and adult use. So um, we kind of have that in Washington now where if you're medical and you're registered, you can go and pick up clones. And that's really the only thing you can do other than getting like 10% off on, you know, tax free or whatever for medical patients. But outside of that, I don't really see anything in here that is revolutionary that would take an extra three years uh, and why they need to, to drag their feet on that. 
But um, good news, nonetheless, the first state in the South to do that and, and anticipating the domino effect to follow suit as uh, all these states, including, including Kentucky, that has the uh, lowest funded pension uh, plan out there. Um, we'll have to see how, kind of how this rolls out. Um, maybe one of the things we'll, we'll point out before we wrap this up, Katrina, is that the Senate is going to allow companies to vertically integrate, but they'd be charged a $1 million licensing fee which would help fund social equity provisions. So what are you going to, really? <laughs> Come on, y'all. That's ridiculous. Uh, that, that, is, that is asinine uh, because they're not going to charge a million for, for a producer, a million for a processor, and a million for a retailer. Uh, that's just prohibitive. Uh, and so where they, where they got that, dollar amount um that that's just that's just nuts uh that's on par with florida and ohio florida had wanted like 23 years experience or something and like 25 million dollars or something ridiculous and ohio was only going to allow the uh backstreet boys and in sync to to produce cannabis and that was it uh, there's like five licenses and and that was all um right. Looks like Virginia wants to have a sales tax of at least 21%. And then in addition to the state sales tax of 6%, and then municipalities could charge an additional 3%. So you're looking at at least 30%. Uh, 30%. I think Washington is, are we now down to 37 instead of like 42 or whatever it was? Right. Yeah. So again, they're not doing really anything different. So um Hopefully somebody there in Virginia is watching this and, and they'll speed the process up because we told them to. Yeah, they're going to listen to us, but yeah. uh, come on, Virginia, look at some of the other programs that have stumbled and improved while you still can. That's right. Send a copy of this podcast to your senator and your house rep and let them know. Talking Hedge said, hurry up. That's it. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh. I want to thank my guest, Katrina Golgowski, angel investor and attorney. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks, Josh. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. And check out these other videos that we've got.